Welcome to our mini instructional video entitled, The Flow of Multiplying Success. I am Ken Magtoto, a first year Bachelor of Science in Accountancy student from La Consolation College, Manila. And I will be your guide in today's lecture. Within this video are three mathematical problems about bacteria, people crossing a river, and examination scores. We will be using Polya's problem-solving strategy, which consists of understand the problem, devising a plan, carrying out that plan, and reviewing the solution in solving these problems. So, without further ado, let's begin. I have a question for you guys. How frequently are you washing your hands? Since the less frequent we wash our hands, the number of bacteria may grow as time passes by. And that's our first problem for today, which is bacterial growth. The problem reads, the bacteria in a petri dish grow in a manner such that each day the number of bacteria doubles. On what day will the number of bacteria be half of the number present on the 12th day? So to answer this problem, let us now implement Polya's problem-solving strategy. Let's go! As we do in our day-to-day -day lives, to solve our problems, we must first understand it. So here in our first mathematical problem, as I have said before, the bacteria is in a petri dish, and each day the number of bacteria doubles. So on what day will the number of bacteria be half of the number present on the 12th day? So I guess it must be a whole number and it is a multiple of 3 and 6. So now that we've understood the problem at hand, we must devise a plan to solve it. So we can translate the statement in a mathematical equation and solve for what day will the number of bacteria be half of the number present on the 12th day. Now, we must implement the plan. The given that we have is that the bacteria in the petri dish grow in a manner such that each day the number of bacteria doubles. So we can say that in the first day we have only one bacteria. On the second day, the bacteria doubles. So the one bacteria will be squared or we can say that 2 over 1. Either way, it becomes 2 bacteria. On the third day, the 2 bacteria doubles. So we can say that it is 2 squared which is 4 bacteria. But we can observe that the number of bacteria in the present day will always be half of the number of bacteria in the previous day. Therefore, the number of bacteria on the 11th day is half of the number of bacteria on the 12th day. So we can say that the number of bacteria in day 12 divided by 2 equal to the number of bacteria in day 11. To check if our plan is carried out perfectly and we had no mistakes, we must review our solution. Checking the answer by showing the sequence starting on the first day to the 12th day. Which means that day 1, we have 1 bacteria, day 2, we have 2 bacteria, day 3, we have 4, day 4, we have 8, day 5, we have 16, day 6, we have 32, day 7, we have 64, and so on and so forth. Until we reach that, on day 11, we have 1,024 bacteria, and on the 12th day, we have 2,048 bacteria. So now, our final answer will be, it is the number of bacteria in day 11, which is... 1024 since the number of bacteria in day 12 is 2048. Have you got it a chance to ride the Pasig River Ferry? The Pasig River Ferry is a mode of transportation via water within Metro Manila. It travels through Pasig River and Marquina River. It also passes through some of the cities within the region like Taguig, Marquina, Pasig, Manila, Mandaluyong, and Bapati. That question connects with our second mathematical problem. Four people on the side of a river need to cross the river in a boat that can carry a maximum load of 180 pounds. The weight of the people are 80, 100, 150, and 170 pounds. The questions are, explain how the people can use the boat to get everyone to the side of the river, and what is the minimum number of crossing that must be made by the boat. So by using Polya's problem-solving strategy, we need to analyze and understand the problem first. Let A equals to 80 pounds, let B equal to 100 pounds, let C equal to 150 pounds, let D equal to 170 pounds, and let N equal to 180 pounds. And let them be the weights of the individuals and the boat's maximum capacity, respectively. We need to explain how people can use the boat to get everyone on the opposite side of the river, and we need to determine the minimum number of crossings that must be made. Now that we've understood the problem, we need to devise a plan to solve it. The boat carries a maximum load of 180 pounds, Therefore, people with weights 80 and 100 will cross together, and people with weights 150 and 170 will cross alone. Now it's time to carry out the plan. We take the first crossing, person A and B, across the river. Their weights 80 and 100 is equal to 180 pounds, so it is exact with the maximum amount of weight that the boat can carry. For the second crossing, person B returns with the boat, leaving person A on the other side of the river. For the third crossing, person C, whose weight is 150, 
takes the boat from person B and crosses the river alone. For the fourth crossing, person A whose weight is 80 takes the boat from person C whose weight is 150 and returns back to the other side of the river. For the fifth crossing, now again people with weights 80 and 100 cross the river. Now to continue with the sixth crossing, a person with a weight of 100 returns back to the original side by leaving the person of weight 80 from the other side. For the seventh crossing, a person whose weight is 170 takes the boat from person B whose weight is 100 and then crosses the river. For the eighth crossing, a person whose weight is 80 takes the boat from the person whose weight is 170 and returns back to the original side. So, at this point, the persons who are on the other side is person C and D, and the person who's on the original side is person B, and the person who's on the boat is person A. And finally, for the ninth crossing, people with weights 80 and 100 cross the river. Therefore, all people have reached the opposite sides of the river. To check if our answers are correct, we made a table to illustrate what happened in the scenarios earlier. So within this table, we put in the nine crossings, which route they are going to, the person who's riding the boat according to their weight, and who are the ones remaining on the original side. You may pause the video to look at it, or I'll give you five seconds to look at it. So, for the final answers in the two questions, so for the question A, explain how people can use the boat to get everyone on the side of the river. So, our, our answer there is, the people can use the boat to transport everyone across the river by strategically pairing individuals with weights that allow them to stay within the boat's weight limit. By carefully coordinating trips and leaving certain individuals on the opposite side, they can ensure that all four people successfully reach the other side of the river with a series of crossings. For, so, for the question B, what is the minimum number of crossings that must be made by the boat? So, the answer for that is, we find that the minimum of nine crossings are required to cross the river. We have solved the second mathematical problem everyone. Only one more problem remains. So let's finish strong. I have one last question for you guys. How do you prepare for an examination? Preparing for an examination is no easy task. You must put in the effort to review your past lessons in order to have a satisfactory grade in those said exams. Take Dana for example. On three examinations, Dana received scores of 82, 91, and 76. What score does Dana need on the fourth examination to raise her average to 85? Let us now use Polya's problem solving strategy one last time. So to understand the problem, Dana needs to raise her average on the fourth examination to 85. On three examinations, as I've said earlier, Dana received scores of 82, 91, and 76. So we need to devise a plan to make her average go to 85. So we can write an equation using S for the score of the examination. So the equation is 82 plus 91 plus 96 plus S is equal to 85 times 4. And after we've done that, we need to divide the sum of the said numbers by 4. So I'll show that in a little bit. So now let's carry out that plan with the mathematical equation we have created earlier. So it is 82 plus 91 plus 76 plus S is equal to 85 times 4. So first, we have to multiply 85 times 4. So the product will be 340. So the mathematical equation will be 82 plus 91 plus 76 plus S is equal to 340. Now, at this point, we need to add the three numbers on the left side of the equal sign. This is 82 plus 91 plus 76. The sum that we will get is 249. So, we combine like terms. It means that the 249 that we have on the left side of the equal sign, we will move it on the right side with the 340. So, as we move it to the right side, its sign will change from positive to negative. So, the equation now reads S is equal to 340 minus 249. After that, we just combine them so that their difference will be 91. So, our equation will be S is equal to 91. Now that we've known what score Dana will, needs to get, we need to check if it's correct. So, 82 plus 91 plus 76 plus 91, that will equal to 340. If we divide them by the number of examination that Dana took, which is 4, it will equal to 85. So now we need to review the solution like we have done earlier, which is the 82 plus 91 plus 76 plus 91, and the sum of those we need to divide by 4, which equals to 85. So the final answer is, Dana needs to score 91 in her fourth examination to get an average of 85. We have now solved the three mathematical problems, everyone. Incredible job! This mini instructional video is made through the effort of these group members. 
we have Mr. Aragon, who solved the first mathematical problem about bacterial growth. Ms. Esteban, who answered the third mathematical problem about the examination scores. Ms. Esguera, who edited this main instructional video. Yours truly, for the video's voiceover. Ms. Montemayor, who made this creative presentation. And Ms. Sapio, who answered the second mathematical problem about the number of people crossing the river. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you picked up some knowledge on how to solve certain mathematical problems and that it may help you in this modern world today and in the foreseeable future. And now I'll leave you with a quote from Truman Burbank in the movie The Truman Show. In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.